This week on Jambar TV, we'll be talking about the car break-ins occurring on campus. Then we'll also discuss International Coffee Hour held at Jones Hall. We'll also talk about the volleyball team and their Wisconsin road trip. Welcome into Jambar TV. I'm Krista Ritz. And I'm Caitlin McCarthy. YSU has seen an unprecedented amount of car break-ins on campus. Jambar reporter Cheyenne Gibbons has more. Youngstown and the greater Mahoning area have seen an increase in vehicular crimes such as auto thefts and car break-ins. Sean Varso said this is reflected on the YSU community. We have a number of, of break-ins that have happened since the beginning of August. Um, I believe it's around 14 or 15. Varso said the car break-ins don't have an obvious pattern in terms of when and where they happen. They've happened all over campus. It's not one particular area where they have occurred. It's all times of the day. Um, there's not any specific time that it's occurring. Varso said damages in stolen property has been minimal except for one instance. In one case there was a broken window. Uh, for the most part, all of these have occurred, um, the vast majority of these have occurred where there has been no damage to the vehicle. Maria Carter had her vehicle broken into, but was unaware there were car break-ins on campus. I wasn't even aware that there were car break-ins um, until I had to find out through um, that at Yik Yak. That's what was so alarming about all of this. Barso said there are tips to prevent your car from being broken into. It's less likely to happen to somebody who has a locked vehicle. Also, it you know, leads into this and, and what feeds into this is that if you leave items in plain sight, if a person can look in your vehicle and see change, see money, see laptops sitting right in the vehicle, they're more apt to try to get into that vehicle than any other vehicle. If you believe your car has been broken into, contact YSU Police at 330-941-3527. For Jambar TV, I'm Cheyenne Gibbons. Students let their voices be heard by chanting and by writing messages around the university in chalk to express their dismay with the recent admission of cuts expected to come to faculty and even departments. Editor-in-Chief Elizabeth Koss breaks the story. On September 26, students held a rally and protest demonstration outside the Becker Family Fountain Commons area just outside Kilcally Center. While making signs and writing phrases on the sidewalk with chalk, Students were chanting phrases like save the arts and stop the cuts through the protest duration. Nathaniel Hunter, one of the organizers for the protest, said they wanted faculty to know they weren't alone. The big thing we want, the big group we're trying to reach is the faculty. We want to let them know they are not alone. There are a lot of students who stand with them. As clearly this shows, there are students that stand with the faculty against these cuts. We don't want them, the faculty doesn't want them, there's only one group of people who wants them, and that's the administration. Some faculty even attended the demonstration. One biology professor said he supported the students in protesting against the cuts. I mean, everybody on campus, now it's getting to the point where every single year wondering, what program's on the chopping block? You know, the students are like, am I going to be able to finish my program? Am I going to be able to take my classes? And of course, the faculty are like, am I going to have a job? And this is no way to run a university. It simply can't be done this way. For one student who attended the rally, they said that what the university was doing in terms of cuts felt like a violation of educational rights. I can't say it makes me mad because a part of me does understand. I do go to college, so I understand how the world works. But to stop people from getting a degree that they want, it feels very inhumane in some sort of way. You're taking away my right to learn something that I want to learn about. Reporting for the Jam Bar, I'm Elizabeth Koss. Roller Derby is adapting a new kind of derby life since the COVID-19 pandemic brought the world to a momentary halt. The, the Little Steel Derby girls have helped with saving the sport by having their skaters skate for multiple leagues. Shauna Strotnikes, daughter of YSU professor Sharon Klein, has skated for many years. She joined Little Steel in Youngstown first. And then she did play for Cleveland, um, Burning River Roller Derby, which they were they were ranked pretty high in the world. And she was there when they were at the at playoffs, hosted playoffs there. And then she, you know, she came back to Little Steel. Little Steel Derby girls can be contacted on Facebook for more information about joining Youngstown's Derby League.
The YSU Data Mine is a new program that will teach students from all majors how to work in data science. Jambar News editor Henry Shore has more. The YSU Data Mine was created with help and in partnership with Purdue University. Mark Ward, director of the Purdue Data Mine, told us about how Senator Mike Rooley got the ball rolling in connection with the two schools. Senator Rooley called me on the phone and he didn't email me ahead of time. He didn't tell me he was going to call. He just I'm sitting at my desk and Senator Rooley calls me and I'm like, okay, it's uh, very nice to meet you. And he wanted to bring President Tressel and President Odo and some CEOs and some members of a team we already had a partnership with. And they all came over to Purdue from Ohio for two days. And <laughs> the goal was to brainstorm about partnerships. Jennifer Otto, executive director of the Center for Workforce Education and Innovation, is glad to have Purdue as a partner and a guidepost for success. So my goal, so my goal is we look forward, you know, down the, down the path, you know, Purdue has, you know, so many, 900 students participating, I and mean, given they're a much larger university, but my goal is that we will have, you know, many more active employers and students from across every discipline here at the university participating. So whether you're in business or healthcare or education, our goal is to find projects around data that are relevant to those different domain areas so that we can give all students an experience in the field. The data mining program is open to students from all majors. To apply for the program, visit the data mine page on YSU's website. For Jambar TV, I'm Henry Shore. The temperatures are cooling down and fall is finally here. Shiana, what's the weather looking like for this week? Today I'm outside enjoying the weather because the rest of this weekend's going to look pretty chilly and gloomy. The communication department is much more than media or delivering a speech. The YSU Communication Department offers programs in telecommunication, journalism, and communication studies. We inspire creativity. We encourage each student's passion. We explore new and advanced technologies that connect the human race. The communication programs at YSU ensure that every student is prepared and experienced for the outside workforce for life after YSU. Join the Jam Bar and find your voice when you tell the next big story. Become a host of Rookery Radio and gain hands-on experience, or get involved with TV productions like Light the Wick, Penguin Rundown, and Jambar TV. YSU's communication department is much more than a department, an education, or a degree. It's a home for passionate individuals, for students to find and pursue what they love. You're looking to your future, preparing for your goals, and they're closer than you think. Because here, success is part of the plan. It's a place where academic and social opportunities are meant to prepare you for life, not just the next four years. You'll be equipped to face new challenges and turn hard work into a career. You're ready for your success to take root. And here's where it starts. We are Youngstown State University and proud. You're not waiting to see what the world has in store for you. It's more about what you have in store for the world. All you need is the opportunity. All you need are the resources of a large university and the advantages of a personalized academic setting where you can experience new worlds in the arts and sciences, business and education and make them your own. We are where you shape your future. We are Youngstown State University and proud. Hello and welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Shina Gibbons and this is your weekly weather outlook. Today is going to be pleasant with a lot of sun in the occasional clouds. However, the wind speed will keep it a little bit chilly. By tonight, we'll see a little bit more clouds move into the valley, but the chance for rain remains low. Saturday, we'll see a 91% in of cloud coverage. Those wind speeds will kick up, but it's unlikely we'll see any rain. Saturday night, we'll see a small increase in the chance of rain, but it'll remain the same. Sunday, those clouds will stick around and we'll see really high wind speeds as a result of Tropical Storm Ian, but it's unlikely we'll see any rain. 
By night, we'll see some of those clouds disappear and the chance for rain increases. Now, let's take a look at my four-day forecast. Today is going to be the sunniest day of our weekend with a high of 68 and a low of 46. Saturday, the high will reach 66 with a low of 51. We might see some weather effects from the tropical storm Ian, but it's unlikely we'll see any of that rain. The hot by Sunday we'll see Sunday will be our warmest day with a high reaching 71 and it will drop to 49 by night. Monday we'll see a couple of showers, the high will be 64 and it will drop to a low of 46. That's it for your weekly weather outlook, but you'll want to stay tuned because Austin Caroline will be in the studio with the latest student life. The feeling when my hands are on the piano, it's become comforting. It's somewhere that I can express myself. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is playing music. YSU is allowing me to take what I love and turn it into a career and do it every single day of my life. I'm Alyssa and I'm YM Proud. You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared, and learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you want to matter. It's about engaging every day, building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community, in the heart of a reinvented city. We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. Wait, what? What's going on right now? Yeah, man. Exercise. I don't know. I don't know if I should even be talking to you right now. It's got lots of benefits. Mm. Okay. The benefits of exercise include increased levels of energy, higher quality of sleep, better muscle and bone strength, improved memory, and clearer skin. Welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Austin Caroline. The YSU chapter of the National Society of Collegiate Scholars was recognized as a gold star chapter for the 2021 to 2022 academic year. President of the chapter, David Hewley III, talked about the organization and the benefits of joining. We help through service, uh, scholarship, and leadership. Those are our three pillars. We definitely help students with their resume building. We do workshops and with public speaking. We get um, our results back in like mid-March. That's when the deadline is. And then um, we'll prepare all that time with officer transitions, of training, leadership seminars, and things of that nature. NSCS will hold its induction ceremony on October 28th at 6 p.m. in Kilcally. It will feature distinguished honorary member Lexi Rager as a keynote speaker. For, for more information about NSCS, check out their website. YSU's art department teamed up with East Liverpool to create murals throughout its area. Samantha Smith explains more. Over the summer, two YSU students under the direction of the art department painted a mural here in East Liverpool. In May of this year, the mayor of East Liverpool asked Dragana Cernak, professor in the art department, about creating a mural in the area. She's really working on seeing and renovating the whole town. So one of the ideas and one aspect of that whole renovation is um, mural work. The first mural was completed on Bradshaw Avenue. Once finished, the mayor asked to have another mural completed on a bridge underpass. Rachel Ritz and Mia Mandora, two YSU alumni, worked on the mural over the summer. Ritz explained what the inspiration behind the mural was. We're commissioned by the mayor to really like make this space brighter, feel more welcoming, lead you up into the city. 
and um, we chose a bright color palette that was influenced by Fiesta Ware um, because it's a large pottery factory that um, people in the area tend to be employed at, as well as the history of pottery um, is huge in the development of East Liverpool as a town. Ritz and Mandora will also be creating a mural in Mog Library this semester for YSU. For more information on the art department, visit their website. For Jambar TV, I'm Samantha Smith. On September 23rd, Jones Hall hosted International Coffee Hour, an event for international students where everyone can socialize and enjoy foods and drinks. Nick Dubus, the coordinator for the International Programs Office, explained the goal for International Coffee Hour. We want students to love YSU, and we want them to love the city of Youngstown. And that is our overreaching goal. And if they do that, they're going to tell their family about it, they're going to tell their friends about it, and they're going to all want to come here. Carly Davenberg, the Assistant Director of International Student Affairs, explained how the demographics of international students have changed over the last six years she's been working at YSU. Saudi Arabia was the largest uh, population when I arrived, and um, we've been welcoming more and more students from Nepal. Okay. Yeah, certainly, you know, we had two years of COVID, um, and so that certainly affected the enrollment, so we're really glad to be welcoming students back to campus. If listeners would like to know more about International Coffee Hour, they can go to the Jambar website. The next International Coffee Hour will be sponsored by the Rec Center on October 21st at the Larisha International Collaboratory in Jones Hall. After the break, we will hear the latest in YSU sports from our very own Cameron Stubb. You're looking to your future, preparing for your goals, and they're closer than you think. Because here, success is part of the plan. It's a place where academic and social opportunities are meant to prepare you for life, not just the next four years. You'll be equipped to face new challenges and turn hard work into a career. You're ready for your success to take root, and here's where it starts. We are Youngstown State University, and proud. Wait, what? What's going on right now? Yeah, man. Exercise. I don't know. I don't know if I should even be talking to you right now. It's got lots of benefits. Mm. Okay. The benefits of exercise include increased levels of energy, higher quality of sleep, better muscle and bone strength, improved memory, and clearer skin. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Young Sun State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. You're not waiting to see what the world has in store for you. It's more about what you have in store for the world. All you need is the opportunity. All you need are the resources of a large university and the advantages of a personalized academic setting where you can experience new worlds in the arts and sciences, business and education and make them your own. We are where you shape your future. We are Youngstown State University and proud. Welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Cameron Stubbs with this week's YSU Sports. The volleyball team has struggled as of late, losing their last five matches. Assistant producer Katie Rogers Vidala has more on their latest stretch. Following a tough loss last week to Cleveland State, the YSU volleyball team head west to compete in Wisconsin against Green Bay and Milwaukee before heading home on September 27th to take on Oakland. In the first contest against Milwaukee, the Penguins dropped a three set to one match. Following the first set victory, the Panthers dominated defensively, earning nearly 10 more digs than the Penguins. Sophomore standout Paula Gershing posted her eighth double-digit kill performance with 14 kills, while adding three blocks and five digs. 
Striking right behind Gershing was fellow sophomore Kaya Franklin and senior Josie Borum with nine kills. Borum also led the team in assists with 23. The team stayed in Wisconsin for one more day as they took on another Horizon League opponent in the Green Bay Phoenix. Despite taking the third set to extra points, Youngstown State would fall once again in a four-set match. Gershing led the squad with 21 kills, and Borum recorded her fourth triple-double of the season with 11 kills, 22 assists, and 13 digs. Other notable performances included senior Izzy Dora Sizik with 16 digs and 3 aces, freshman Abby Householder with 10 kills, and sophomore Isabel Schaefbauer who added 19 assists and 9 digs. Youngstown State returned from their road trip September 27th when they battled the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. Once again, the Penguins commanded set one but would fall in defeat the next three, resulting in a four-set loss. In the last four four-set matches, the Penguins have retained a 1-0 lead each time before dropping the match. Freshman Abby Householder explains what she believes is the difference in the team's performance between the first set and the rest. Just the energy, like we just, it drops after the first set. We come out really strong, excited with like the drive that we're going to beat them, even though they have no faith that we're even going to steal a set from them. And then I don't think it's an overconfidence thing. I think we just like spaz a little bit. <laughs> This match became the fifth consecutive loss for Youngstown State. Against the Golden Grizzlies, Borum added another triple-double to her season with 13 kills, 18 assists, and 18 digs. She is now the leader among Division I athletes in the triple-double category. Gershing followed with a double-double of 20 kills and 13 digs, while Schaefbauer posted 23 assists in the contest, and Borum and Sizik both contributed 18 digs. The team is now 6-9, and nine, heading into the second half of their homestand. Head coach Alini Scott says what the key is to win future matches and overcoming rallying points. Consistency, because if we can come out and win 25-9-10, that means we know what to do. We just got to be able to stay consistent. The volleyball team's homestand will continue on September 30th and October 1st when they take on IUPUI and Purdue Fort Wayne. For Jambar TV, I'm Katie Rogers Videla. The Youngstown State University softball team have been hosting fall softball games or fall ball games the past two weeks at the Cavelli Sports Complex. These games do not count towards the official season in the spring, but the team is taking full advantage of the opportunities to build the team's chemistry. Head coach Brian Campbell talked about how the development process right now is helping in the fall. We have seven new kids, seven new players. We lost eight last year. Uh, to graduation. Um, you know, it's, it's very important for us to develop. Uh, we do a lot of stuff. We try to pr press the envelope a little bit, certain kids with speed and everything to, to be able to, to get them in different scoring positions or take that extra base, you know, and see if they can possibly do that. And that helps us going into the spring for us to be able to see, you know, you've been in it. Um, you know, is this something you can or cannot do? Freshman Madison Griffin had a strong showing as she pitched six shutout innings in the fall ball game versus Slippery Rock University. Griffin talked about how the fall experience is helping her build her confidence for the spring season. It's huge, you know, softball is a game of momentum. Obviously, as I started doing better and better, I got more confident, started to spin the ball better. That really helped me out. Decorated YSU pitcher Ellie Buffenbarger graduated this past spring season but she has returned to the team in a new role as the assistant softball coach. Coach Buffenbarger talked about what it means to be back where she made so much history as a player. It's really awesome. You know, it was obviously when I saw the position was open and I went through the interview process, you know, I wasn't really sure what they were going to go with, what direction. Um, but when I like got the job, I was like, this is awesome. You know, this is a school I love, a city I love. And uh, getting to stay with the program in any capacity is awesome. The, the softball team will host four more games this fall, including a doubleheader today versus Notre Dame College and Walsh University. Catch these games at the Cavelli Sports Complex and stay up to date on all YSU softball at ysusports.com. The Youngstown State University women's soccer team returned to action September 25th against the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, but was pushed back to the morning of the 26th due to a lightning delay. The game would not be decided until the final six seconds, resulting in a one-to-one -one draw. 
Graduate student and three-time team captain Jordan Evans struck first on the pitch just outside the left corner from a free kick attempted by senior Michaela Mustard. Here's what Evans had to say about scoring the team's lone goal. It was awesome. Um, I feel like it's a feeling that's like indescribable. Um, it was great that I was able to be in that position and had that opportunity that I like could give my team. The Panthers fought back with six seconds left in the final period of the play with a goal to force a draw. The Penguins now sit with a record of two, six, and three. The soccer team will be returning to action October 6th to take on Green Bay at Farmers National Bank Field. For more information and to check out highlights from the game, check out ESPN Plus and YSUsports.com. And now we'll throw it over to Cheyenne Gibbons with a recap on weather. Thanks, Cameron. It's unlikely we'll see any rain this weekend, but the high wind speeds and the cloud coverage will limit any weather-dependent outdoor activities. Well, that's it for us here at Jambar TV. Um, Caitlin, how do you feel about the budget, uh, the cuts that are happening? Well, I think it's scary for us as students, but I think it's even scarier for the students that are going to be end up coming to YSU for they're not going to have as many programs and they're going to have to try to find other universities mm -hmm. um, to find a major. Absolutely. It's very scary that we're, you know, having to deal with this right now, but I think if anybody can, you know, get through this, it's the Penguins here. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so that is it for us here at Jambar TV. Have a great weekend, Penguins. Stay safe, Penguins. Support for Jambar TV script. is provided in part by the YSU Foundation and the Jane F. Lamb Charitable Foundation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're looking to your future, preparing for your goals, and they're closer than you think. Because here, success is part of the plan. It's a place where academic yeah. and social opportunities are meant to prepare you for life, not just the next four years. <laughs> You'll be equipped to face new challenges and turn hard work into a career. You're ready for your success to take root. And here's where it starts. We are Youngstown State University and proud. The feeling when my hands are on the piano, it's become comforting. It's somewhere that I can express myself. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is playing music. YSU is allowing me to take what I love and turn it into a career and do it every single day of my life. I'm Alyssa and I'm Y and Proud. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. Hey kid, you wanna try some exercise? Wait, what? What's going on right now? Yeah man, exercise. I don't know. I don't know if I should even be talking to you right now. It's got lots of benefits. Mm. Okay. The benefits of exercise include increased levels of energy, higher quality of sleep, better muscle and bone strength, improved memory, and clearer skin. You're not waiting to see what the world has in store for you. It's more about what you have in store for the world. All you need is the opportunity. All you need are the resources of a large university and the advantages of a personalized academic setting. 
where you can experience new worlds in the arts and sciences, business and education, and make them your own. We are where you shape your future. We are Youngstown State University and proud.